Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and stand and give God praise as we sing that song, Hallelujah for the Lord our God. And Hallelujah for the Lord our God.
I'm going to worship him for who he is. Let's go ahead and see that song, Awesome is the Sight. Come on. And awesome is the sight of your church, New Broncos Church, for those who are at home watching, uh, we pray God's blessing, protection, health, and favor upon your household, family, children, marriage, and ministry. Praying for our fellowship leaders. Keep them in your daily prayers as they battle hard things that we would cry over. Keep in prayer Pastor Wayman Mitchell, Pastor Greg, Miss Lisa Mitchell, Pastor Ruby, and Miss Yolanda Ruby. Also, keep in prayer Pastor Benny and Miss Peggy in the Mother Church. Yes, want to right keep in prayer our evangelists right now. Yes, uh, God's right got His protection, favor, and provision yes. upon them, their yes, families. I want to pray for our missionaries who are fighting hard battles overseas, going through crazier things that we could not even imagine. But God's got His protection, favor, and health upon all our missionaries. Yes, pray right for our first responders in New Braunfels, Texas. Pray yes. for our military troops. 
Pray for my old unit, HHB for the 133rd is currently deployed in Dubai. Praying for the President of the United States, the Vice President, God's guidance, protection, favor, give them wisdom to make hard choices. Want to pray for our missionaries, keep them in your daily prayers. These are the ones that we've helped launch out in January conference. God's guidance, protection, help on them. And then, of course, our sister churches as they gather this yeah, morning. Hallelujah. God's guidance, protection, favor, and health upon them. We want to pray for this service that those who are here and those who are watching on the web, that God would protect them, guide yes, them. Hallelujah. We pray your blessing upon them. I plead the blood of Jesus around your household. I pray, God, your mercy, your grace upon them. I pray, God, Lord Jesus, that you would give us the word for the hour. You have an email, but I didn't mention it. Let's lift it up before God right now, church God. We ask of you that you would move in the Holy Ghost, God, that you would move in the supernatural. Before you tune on, get a hold of God yes. as you were here. Just imagine you're here. Get a hold of God as you would when in regular services. Get a hold of God before hearing the word of God preach. I encourage you. Uh, then a Wednesday service will be here 7 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m. prayer. Get a hold of God. Tune in. We still have morning prayer in the morning at this building. Uh, 5.30 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. Come help me pray for your family, your your children, come help me pray for your ministry. Come help me pray for you in your in your life. Other than that, we have announcements. Uh, we know that due to certain uh, unforeseen events, we do not have outreach. But that does not mean that your personal responsibility to evangelize as a Christian yes. is canceled. You have a responsibility, a God-given mandate to go ye into the world and preach the gospel. Come on. You're standing in line six feet apart from somebody else. Tell them about Jesus. It won't hurt you and it'll do your soul some good. Keep in prayer our fellowship, our leaders. Keep in prayer my family, your family. Keep yes, us all in you. prayer. And we're going to see. We don't know what's going to happen on the other side of this thing. But I'm hoping that God would do a great work. And we need to pray. And we need to evangelize. We need to be Christians. Other than that, that's pretty much it for the uh, announcements. And we could have offering to God. Come take the people of God. Amen and amen. I mean, you know, Jesus Christ is a provider in Deuteronomy. It does say, you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you the power to get well. I mean, you know. I was reading last week, it was a total of 6 million people filing for unemployment. Oof. Kind of makes you love your job a little bit more, huh? 
I was talking to my daughter, and we were talking about how God has blessed her with the job that she has. She was fasting and praying for months. She had a good job with the school district. She was fasting and praying for months for a better job, something where she could actually uh, do more, like save up for a house, save up. She wanted a, a, a better paying job. And uh, so she was applying here and there, applying here and there, and doors were closing, doors were closing. She was getting discouraged. Um, but then she got a job with the Comal Independent School District. And uh, it's a good paying job. But then two weeks later, schools are closed. But she's been getting paid. How many know God can see all things? God moves in all things. And I always, when my children are blessed, my son, he is working right now. I am working right now. And I, I, I'm always sure to tell them it is because you tithe, you give to God, and because you pray and fast. I mean, you know, God listens. God knows how to provide for his children in famine. I encourage you. Get to know the God you serve. Get to know him as Jehovah Jireh. And see what God will do in your life. Scott, if you could bless the tithes, the offerings, the pledges, and the people of God. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you, God, for your faithfulness, God. You are Jehovah Jireh, God. You are the provider, God. You provide for all of our needs, God. You know the future before it even happens, God. You know what's coming, God. And I thank you, God, for providing for us, God. It is only through you that this is even possible, God. God, I pray and ask, God, that you would bless the tithes and the offerings this morning, God. It's in Jesus' name I pray and ask God. Amen. Amen. John was in the Spirit. And John was in the Spirit. treat today. We brought from Texas. Keep him, his family, and his ministry in prayer. Yes, we know that the evangelists, they do a lot of traveling and that uh, they get a love offering. So if you, God puts it on your heart, feel free to put a love offering. You know, go to our, our website. You know, you can pay PayPal. You can pay Zelle through your mobile banking app. Or you can come drop it off at the church. I will be sure to get every penny to Pastor Richie. Let's bless him, his family, yes, and his ministry continually. Other than that, give him a warm round of applause. Come on. Amen. Come on, Pastor Preach. Praise God. What a privilege it is to be here in New Braunfels once again. Amen. Never a dull moment, as I used to say. Come on. If you have your Bibles, we're going to read out of the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 24. Uh -oh. Who would have thought two, three months ago that, you know what, uh, we're not going to be able to meet in church. And I was talking to a friend of mine, and I was sharing with them that algebra I never understood. I gave up mm -hmm. on algebra. But to read the Word of God, read from the Bible as a new convert back in 1993, and to be reading it through the years... And to see where we're at now and to understand that Jesus spoke of these things in the Word of God that hasn't changed and to see it come to pass lets me know that I did a wise move when I said, God, my life is yours. Man. So I'm going to preach a sermon this morning that I've entitled, Why Are We Surprised? <laughs> Why Are We Surprised? Amen. It's interesting, uh, David Wilkerson, in 1986, you do the math on how far ago that was, amen. Mm -hmm. He made this comment, you know, how he's known for uh, giving prophecies and whatnot, and he said, I see a plague coming on the world. The bars, churches, and governments will shut down. The plague will hit New York City and shake it like it's never been shaken before. The plague is going to force prayerless believers into radical prayer 
into their Bibles, and repentance will be the cry of the man of God in the pulpit. Out of it will come a third great awakening that will sweep America and the world. Come on. This was something that was spoken by a man of God in 1986. And here we are today, church, in 2020. Let that be a lesson there that when a man of God or even God speaks, it may not happen right there and then, but you can write it down. I've learned to write things down in my Bible. Yes, sir. That way when they come to pass, I can put the date when it came to pass and when the word was given. Let's go to our text. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 37, it says, But as it was, the days of Noah were, or let me start over again, But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 38, For as the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. Verse 39. And did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Amen. And it's interesting because we see everything that was happening there. We'll get into that here a little bit more in a little bit, but it's interesting the trouble they were in back then and they did not have social media uh -oh. back then. Now you can only imagine where we're at today because of social media. Uh -oh. Genesis 6 verse 5. It says, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent and the thoughts of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. This is back in Genesis, in the beginning of the Word of God. And so it's interesting to me that here we are in 2020, and with all the technology that we have, we have not gotten better. We've gotten worse. Now, Who needs a living God that is merciful and willing to forgive us of all of our sins when we have Google and Siri and Alexa? Uh -oh. Let's take a look at the warning this morning. The word warning is a statement or an event that indicates a possible or impending danger, a problem, or other unpleasant situation. How many warnings have you and I been receiving? Ruh -ruh. There's a difference when you get a warning for running a red light or a stop sign. We know the days of Noah when he began to build the ark. Keep in mind, they did not have a Lowe's or a Home Depot back then. So as he's building the ark, he's preaching. He's informing the people. He's proclaiming to the people that are there for at least 120 years. And of course, their reaction, the people that are hearing the messages from Noah, is like the reactions we get in today's times. In that as well, why is he building this big ark? Why is he building this big boat? It's not like we're going to go down to Corpus Christi. We're not going to go down to the lake. We're not. There's no water nearby. And so as he's building this boat, it makes no sense to everybody that was there. And most often not people's reaction is, you know what? He done lost his mind. Uh -oh. He done lost his mind. He's building this big old boat, the ark. You know, it's interesting when my family and I were pastoring there in Aranzas Pass. When we first got there, uh, I had to learn some things very quickly. And that is that hurricane season starts in June. Uh -oh. <laughs> so from June until November, you have to be on the ready at any given time. Because they will issue mandatory evacuation. I thought it was a cuss word at first. Mandatory evacuation. And we learned. And what's interesting is that the local officials there in Aransas Pass, Ingleside, Rockport, and whatnot, they, they would do everything they could to get the warnings out. Listen, this is a mandatory evacuation. Everybody must leave, uh, even down to, into the Houston area, Galveston area. So the warnings were given. The first time they gave us a warning, my boss wanted me to stay and work. 
Oh, Richard, it, it, they always say it's going to come, but it's going to pass. It won't hit. I said, listen, I'm on, my family and I are leaving. Yep. I said, if it doesn't come and hit our area, I'll come back and tell you you were right. But if it does hit our area, I'm not going to be stuck here in the middle. Reach. The second time we had to evacuate, my pastor called me and he goes, you know the storm's heading your way. I said, Pastor, we just crossed the San Antonio uh, city limit sign right now. <laughs> <laughs> But there were some people that ignored the warnings. And one story was there in the Galveston area. Here's a man that's been there for many, many years. And in his mind, I'm going to write it out. And, and they begin to tell listen, everybody has to leave. The first responders are going to be gone by this time. So after a certain time, you're on your own. And so here's a man that was sticking to his guns, as it were, and I'm not going to leave, I'm going to stay. And when it was all said and done, and the storm actually came in, and it was pounding Galveston, now he's wanting to leave, but it's too late. Uh -oh. He ignored the warning days before the storm got there. Here's your opportunity. If you need someone to go and pick you up, we can do that right now to get you out of this dangerous area. But he ignored the warning, and as a result of that, he stepped into eternity when he didn't have to. Mm. Mm. We go and witness to people at our jobs, grocery stores, and this is something that's been going on for years. This is something, one of those things that never changes. Come on. And that when you begin to tell people about Jesus Christ, most of the time, you know, well, I grew up in church. <laughs> uh -oh. There is no God. Or better yet, when I'm ready, I'll get saved. Preacher, man, listen, I appreciate you trying to give me this warning. But, you know, I, I have my whole life ahead of me. Like, if they have a lease on life. I've seen, a, I've seen a deed to a paid-for house. I've seen a title to a car. I have not seen a lease to a life. Ooh. If you have one, please send that to Pastor Ofara. I'd like to get a picture of that. That guarantees you how long you're going to live. It's interesting. I was running this idea on why we're so surprised with my father-in-law. We were at a gathering there. And so here's my father-in-law. He made an interesting statement. He said... I remember in the 50s when people were talking about Jesus is coming back. In the 50s. Yeah. Here's my father-in-law that remembers people talking. So you know what that means? That from the beginning of time, people have been giving the warning that Jesus is coming back. And my father-in-law remembers that. How many of you remember 9-11? Uh-oh. We know what happened on 9-11. But let us not forget what happened after 9-11. Mm -hmm. All throughout America, the churches were full. Yep. Because of a big crisis. People that have never been in a church because of 9-11. Now, okay, now they remember where the church is. And I'm going to go to church. I'm going to get my church on. But it looked good at first. But as one day went by. One month, two months, three months. People forgot where the church was at. Yep. And then we go back to life as we know it. Well, everything's back to normal, Pastor. I don't really have to go to church anymore. Let me read this. So this is not the first time. It's not the first rodeo. In 1999 and 2000, what was going around then was Y2K is going to kill us. Yeah. Computers are going to crash and everything. 2001, anthrax is going to kill us. 2002, the West Nile virus is going to kill us. 2003, SARS is going to kill us. 2005, the bird flu is going to kill us. 2006, E. coli is going to kill us. 2008, the bad economy is going to kill us all. Mm -hmm. 2009, the swine flu is going to kill us all. 2010, BP oil is going to kill us all. <laughs> 2011, Obamacare is going to kill us all. <laughs> 2012, the Mayan, right? The end of the world is going to kill us all. 
2013, North Korea is going to kill us all. 2014, Ebola is going to kill us all. Uh -oh. 2015, right? It was a Disney measles and ISIS are going to kill us all. 2016, <laughs> Zika is going to kill us all. 2017, fake news is going to kill us all. 2018, migrant caravans is going to kill us all. 2019, measles is going to kill us all. And of course, 2020, coronavirus is going to kill us all. Mm. Can I say something this morning, church? Listen. Preach. No one's going to live forever. Why do you say that? Because we, now we need to take a look at the pandemic. Uh-oh, come on, preach. This is where the rubber meets the road, as they say. A pandemic of a disease is prevalent over a country, or in our case now, the world. Luke 21, verse 11, it says, And there will be earthquakes in virus places and famines and pestilence, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. How many of you remember the earthquake there in Idaho, of all places, not too long ago? Yeah, yeah. It said it was a 6.5. And it's interesting to me, it said it was the strongest uh, earthquake in over 36 years. Okay, again, I, I barely got out of high school, <laughs> right? But we just read Luke 21, 11. That's why I gave you the scripture, right? And so it says these things are going to happen. And so in our world today, that made the headlines. It's interesting that what you and I see now lines up with the word of God. Preach. Everything that is happening in our world today, not just here in our country, but around the world, lines up with the word of God. And it's all as a result of sin and rebellion. If you don't believe me, you can look up Pastor Alfaro's sermon on all because of sin. He explains it very well. Because we want to get into an argument and a debate on what a sin is and what it is. And you, you get that sermon, it'll help you out. Romans 3, 23 it says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So my point is this. Jesus Christ did not come to a bloody cross just for Evangelist Valerio and Pastor Alfaro. Right? It says Romans 3.23. It doesn't say uh, Valerio and Alfaro sinned. And fall short of the glory of God. It doesn't say that. It says, for all have sinned and fall short. That means that we're all sinners. Mm. If we're going to see God begin to move, sooner or later we have to call it what it is. In a time when we're, we're so used to justifying our actions, well, it's okay because it's not that bad. I had a lady one time tell me, Pastor, it's a good thing you got saved because he used to sell drugs and all these different things. <laughs> As if Jesus just went through the crucifixion and the beaten beyond recognition just for drug dealers. Oh, no. Uh -oh. And so I had to look at this sister and say, Sister, uh, gossiping is a sin too. Ooh. <laughs> In the kingdom of God, when it comes to sin, there is no felonies and no misdemeanors. Oh, it's no. all sin. Yeah. The freedom in Christ only starts when we can call it what it is. Trust me, God is not surprised by what's inside our heart. He already knows what's in our heart. I believe that what surprises God is when you and I choose not to let those things go. I'm going to keep holding on to them. Well, when I have time, I'll get, I'll get things right. Amen. So thirdly, this morning, let's take a look at the whole there is hope this yes. morning. Come on, preach. I understand the way circumstances are looking right now, but hold on to your receipts. Amen. <laughs> First of all, if you're still breathing right now, preach. if you're viewing the sermon through live stream right now, that means you're breathing. So what does that mean? That means there's still hope. Preach. Had a young man in my church, I believe he was about 56, there in Aransas Pass, 
And he asked me, he said, Pastor, is it too late for me? I said, Bob, as long as your heart is beating, you can repent of your sins and get right with God and make heaven your home. He asked the question. I gave him the answer, and yet he still made a choice. He said, well, Pastor, okay, when I'm ready, I'll come back to church. Mm. Why did he ask the question? That's what I mean when I say people get the warning, but they ignore it. Pastor, I still have time. So the first thing we need to do is repent. Repentance is always the beginning of a relationship with God. Second Chronicles 7.14 It says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Yes, amen. We have a problem admitting that we're wrong. Yes, really. Let me read that again. Second Chronicles 7, 14. Look it up in your Bible. It's there. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, that means we have to admit we were wrong. We're sinners. Not wrong. And pray and seek my face. That means that we would spend more time with God instead of social media. Oh, no. Mm. And turn from their wicked ways. Then, this is God, I will hear from heaven. And listen, I will forgive their sin. Not just my lady and Alfaro. Oh, come on. <laughs> that means, if you're viewing this right now on live stream, that means that God will forgive your sins. And then it gets better. And heal their land. Preach. So this scripture here is very important because our country was founded on godly principles. That's why the strongest battles are on the East Coast and on the West Coast. New York and California. It's interesting when you look at the early days of revival when people were getting saved and getting healed and things of that nature. That's where revivals were birthed. But over a period of time, it's like, well, I don't, need, I, I don't need a relationship with God because it goes against what I want to do. Mm. Mm. First Kings chapter 17, verse 2 through 6. It says, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook which flows into the Jordan, and it will be there that you shall drink from the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Verse 5, So he went there according to the word of the Lord, for he went and stayed by the brook, which flows into the Jordan. Verse 6, And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And the reason I'm going over the scripture is because here you have a man of God, probably in circumstances like what you and I are facing right now, and yet here is God is asking him to do something that he's not familiar with. Go to such and such a place. I'm going to have the ravens. They're going to bring you your to-go food. Uh -oh, come on. And your water, you're going to get your water from the brook that's there. And why do I say that? Most of us know the scripture that God is the same today, yesterday, today, and forever. So what that means is that God is still God. He does not change. Yeah. Our circumstances change. Yeah. Preach. But God doesn't. Come on. It's easy for you to say you're blessed. Not too fast. Uh oh, come on. <laughs> the problem that we have as God's people many times, God doesn't always move the way we think he's going to move. We're so used to telling God how to do it and when to do it now. Uh -oh. Therefore, we can't say he's Lord. If he's our Lord, that means that he moves however he pleases. As my wife and children uh, were pastoring a church there in Aransas Pass, we were there eight years. The last two years, it was difficult. I couldn't get a steady job during those two years. 
And so my reaction kicks in. Well, we got to do this. We got to pay. And I would go and do side jobs here and there for a plumber and things of that nature. But when it was all said and done, we never went without eating. Preach. I had seen God through the years bless us with a check in the mail. We hear that quite a bit. And so as we began the two-year journey there, uh, it was like, okay, God, we're going to get a check. So I'm waiting for a check. You know, and my wife calls me. One day she goes, hey, there's an envelope here. We'll go ahead and open it. There was $500 in there, all in $1 bills. Wow. wow. <laughs> all spins. <laughs> all spins. And it's almost like God was smiling and saying, so you think you have me all figured out? And then my wife looks at me and she goes, did you tell anybody? The only one that knows is you and God. All in $1 bills. Some were crispy, some were all beat up. You know? <laughs> But $500 in $1 bills is still money. Preach. It would have been nice if God had sent me an email. My beloved servant. Uh -oh. <laughs> my son Richard. On such and such date, things are going to turn for you. You're going to be looking for work. You're not going to find any. And it's going to be for about a period of about two years. I could have looked at my wife and said, Rachel, don't worry about it. It's only going to be about two years, and God's going to provide for us. But I didn't get the email. It just happened. And then, of course, there was the eviction notice. I forgot. I hadn't, hadn't told my wife about that, and she was with me in a revival, and I got to this point, and her eyes got really big. <laughs> <laughs> and so we didn't get evicted, but we did get the notice. And so I called the, the landlord. And I said, look, can, can you wait for me? Uh, I'm going to go preach a revival. And then from there, I'm going to go uh, to Bible conference. And, you know, she, she's all apologizing. And listen, if I had paid rent, we wouldn't be having this conversation. It's not your fault. And she goes, okay, I'll wait for you. And so the mind battle is, how can you go to Bible conference? How can you go preach a revival when your kids are going to get kicked out of the house and all your belongings are going to be in the front yard and all that? That was just the devil messing with my mind. Yep. And so I go and preach this revival in Superior, Arizona. It was like a Thursday through Sunday morning. We finished there, got a love offering there. And then uh, uh, the pastor informs me, well, you're not going to preach here tonight. We don't have a night service. You're going to preach for Pastor Gooding. I said, are you serious? He goes, yeah. He showed me the advertisement. I said, oh, my. <laughs> okay, then. Here we go, you know. God didn't send me that email either. <laughs> and I respect Pastor Gooding a lot. And so I ended up preaching uh, at Pastor Gooding's church Sunday evening. And what's interesting is as I'm preaching there, I had a good time. We prayed for people. People got healed and things of that nature. But when he gives me the love offering, it was a love offering like if I had done a revival. Chonga. And so when I get back home, not only do we pay Everything that needs to be paid, there was still money left over. And this is my point. Are you expecting God to meet all of your needs a certain way? Or can God just surprise you? Hmm. And while we're waiting for this surprise, we have to keep doing our part. Amen. Which means we still pray, we still read our Bible, and for the time being, we're getting fed through live streams. I'm thankful we can at least be fed on live stream. I'm thankful. I've been in some countries. I have friends right now that uh, because of the preaching of the gospel, you know, they, they, it doesn't end up well for them. And so we're still privileged here in the United States of America. Now let me read some breaking news. This is right off the press and it's not from CNN. Right off the press from the Valerio Printer at home. <laughs> breaking news I don't know if you want to write this down or not but it's breaking news prayer not cancel hallelujah fasting oh now not cancel yep. bible study spending time in the word not cancel giving oh now not cancel there's no excuse you can drive by, drop it off in the morning. You can uh, mail it to the church. You can go online and give. Preach. Your pastor already mentioned it. Witnessing is not canceled. Courage, 
not canceled. Faith is not canceled. Come on. You know what motivates me? You know, talking to a few people here and there, they ask me about what we're going through uh, here with the coronavirus and all that. I said, honestly, when I thought God had just abandoned me during those two years when we were uh, in Aransas Pass, I, I didn't understand it then. Little did I know that what we went through during those two years, God was preparing me to be a full-time evangelist and to learn to depend on God to meet all of our needs, however he sees fit. And I would dare say to those of you that are viewing online, the reason you struggle a lot because everything has to be one plus one is two. And with God, at any given time, one plus one can be $500 in $1 bills. Come on, preach. Can you imagine if all of God's people right now would begin to pray in the morning, at noon, when we make time to pray and talk to God with no distractions? Some of us are more in tune with all the updates of those that have gotten the coronavirus and those that have died than we are with the word of God. Oh, now. I can guarantee you this. If you and I make time to talk to God and pray, and dare I say it, fast, mm. and be in tune with God, we'll begin to see a change in our country. Two things are going to happen. People that have ignored the warnings, when we were able to go and talk to people in person, give them flyers and invite them to church and would pray for them for their salvation. And oh, not right now, preacher. When I'm ready, you'll be the first one to know because you're going to pray with me. Those that ignored the warnings. I'm okay, pastor. I'm okay, preacher. Now they're thinking about the warnings they've received through the years. Mm. And as David Wilkerson said, there's people that have been even in our churches. Even in our churches. They're in our churches, but they're just going through the motions. Oh, well, I don't have to go to church. I'll just, you know, I'll buy the CD. I'll, you know, I'll do this. It was hard for me at first. I've been in church for 27 years. What do you mean I got to stay home and watch it on live stream? That was hard. My wife and I, what, what, what do you mean stay home? If we're going through this now, that means that the best is yet to come. Preach that. But we have to do our part. Pastor Ben Rodriguez, our pastor, was uh, preaching along these lines. And he said, you know, the people that do not know Jesus out there are looking at us now. And they want to know why we can still be so calm. Yeah. And I'm sure we all have our own stories. But for me, now knowing what I know now, I, I'm thankful that I went through those two years. Okay, I didn't want to mention it because it deals with my pride, but I'm going to go ahead and mention it. Um, we had a knock on our door during those two years. It's a knock at the door. And so it was one of the men from our church, Mr. Doug, Doug Grimes. And he said, Pastor, God spoke to me in prayer to bring you some groceries. And my pride kicked in. And I said, it's okay, Doug, God's going to provide you know, that was, my, that was my pride. God's going to provide for us. He goes, no, pastor, you don't understand. It's in the car already. I just need you to help me bring them into your house. And so I went with them, and it was a lot of groceries from HEB. You know, we made a few trips to his car and back in uh, to our house at the time. And I thanked him for it and whatnot. And when he's leaving and I'm walking back inside, that's when God rebuked me and checked me. Yeah. And he says, you know, it's okay for you to bless the people in your church with spiritual things. But it's not okay for them to try to bless you with physical things that you know you need. And he says, that's your pride. And, it, it, and I know God doesn't just deal with me like that. Uh -oh. <laughs> I know God deals with all of us like that. What determines if we survive it or not is how we respond to that. Mm. Amen. I'd like every head bowed and every eye closed. Amen. What a privilege it is this morning to be able to meet, even if it's through live stream. Amen. As our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, 
I don't know if you're saved. I don't know if you've surrendered your life to Jesus. But I would like to give this invitation, and that is maybe you're not saved. You've never asked God to forgive you of your sins. But this morning, you would be honest with God and say, God, I am a sinner. I've done some things that I'm not proud of. But as I said here this morning, I want to repent. I want to turn away from my life of sin. I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. If that's you, right where you're at, right where you're at with your head bowed, eyes closed, just repeat this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I ask you right now to forgive me of all of my sins. I give you my life from this day forward. I receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I ask you right now to make me whole with the blood of Jesus. I'm asking you right now, Lord, to fill me with your Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Before we dismiss, we're going to pray for some other things uh, this morning. Amen. If you said that prayer there on live stream, I want to encourage you and you meant it with your heart. Bible says that God has forgiven you of your sins and you're a new creation in Christ now. Your life is going to begin to change. But I would encourage you, if you prayed that prayer, call Pastor Alfaro here at the church and let him know that way you can have other people help you pray and your relationship with God. Amen. And as we're here this morning, I want to pray for people in need of healing. If you're sick in body, whether it's headaches, stomach pains, back pains, knee pains, any kind of pain in your body, I want to encourage you right now, put your hand where you need God to heal you. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. There's some of you here or in live stream or both. You sleep at night, but you wake up more tired when you should be rested. And that's as a, as a result of worry and stress. And we're going to pray for that this morning as well. As you have your hand where you need the healing this morning, we're going to pray. Say this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I ask you right now to help me to forgive all those who have hurt me, who have sinned against me. I release them into your hands. God, I ask you right now to help me to forgive myself from this day forward. I receive your forgiveness and your healing. I bind and rebuke Every generational curse of infirmity and sickness, I cast out worry, anxiety, unbelief, evil speaking, witchcraft, manipulation. And I thank you for the power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let's give God praise. <laughs> just do us a favor. The minute you realize that you're not getting the headaches or the migraines no more, call Pastor Alfaro and let him know. Yes. We love to brag about God's faithfulness. Yes. So here it is. God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. As an evangelist, I'm privileged to be able to preach in a lot of our churches uh, in our fellowship. But one of the things that amazes me is that wherever we worship and praise God, and give him right away. He freely moves and he heals people. People that have been healed from migraines. Couples that couldn't have children. And the list can go on and on. But my point is this. Is that you and I serve a faithful God. And a lot of my blessings started. 
1993, when I finally said, God, I'm tired of my life, and I want to turn away from my life of sin. That was 27 years ago. And so I want to encourage you. When you read your Bible in the morning or in the evening, when you read your Bible, if God speaks to you, if God speaks to you through the live stream, whatever God speaks to you, I would encourage you to write it in your Bible or in a journal, the date that it was given, and when God answers that prayer, or when that word comes to pass, go back to your journal and then write the date when it came to pass. I have a habit of doing those things so that when times like we're in now, I can go back to my Bible and say, God, you helped us back in 2008. You helped us in 2010 because I have it documented on my Bible or my journal. And with confidence, I can say, you're going to help us in the situations we're in now. Preach. And I just want to encourage you, uh, continue to pray and fast and get a hold of God. Your phone's going to be there whenever you finish. It's still going to be there. No one's going to take it away from you. I just want to encourage you to help us. Amen. Let's give God praise as Pastor Alfaro comes up. Church, we are blessed to have that man's ministry. He's always yes. been a blessing. Once again, if, if you were stirred, encouraged, if God healed you, if God spoke to you through there, feel free uh, leave a comment below in the description of today's service. I am going to put Pastor Richie's website so you can go online, check for yourself the miracles uh, that his ministry has seen, uh, the miracle babies, miracle money, miracle jobs, uh, just an awesome testimony. And I will leave uh, his email in the description of, uh, below so you can write him, look, hey, you prayed for me via uh, online services. I got healed, and so that way he can put it on his website, give God the glory, and encourage other people around the world. Other than that, as I had mentioned earlier, we are uh, taking a love offering. If you want to bless his household, his wife, his children, his marriage, if you want to bless his ministry with finances, I mean, you know, prayers are good, but uh, money pays bills. Other than that, if you want to do that, feel free, call me up, text me, PayPal it on the, uh, our duck www. Uh, what is it? The door mbtx.com. You can pay online there. You got a uh, Zelle. Uh, do it like that. Every penny that comes in will go to Pastor Richie. Yes, we'll we'll, we'll cut him a check again tonight, and uh, God will bless you. Other than that, I thank you for your attention. We're going to be here tonight, uh, seven o'clock, six o'clock prayer. Get a hold of God before, even if you're sitting in your uh, love seat, your your lazy boy, uh, in your chonis. Get a hold of God before hearing the word of God. You know how I love to see y'all in the prayer room. I miss y'all in the prayer room. Yes. But set up that prayer room. Set up that closet in your living room. Other than that, we'll see you tonight.